Hello everyone. Welcome to the next session of Ansys Workbench Tutorials. In this session, we are analyzing a plain rectangular wall for transient thermal analysis. We have already done this analysis of a plain wall using steady state thermal analysis. The difference between steady state thermal and transient analysis is steady state means your time is going to remain constant and transient analysis your time varies so we are going to take up a particular value and then we are going to vary it with respect to time transient analysis can also be of two types it can be linear as well as non-linear today we are analyzing for the linear aspect in the next session we will take up non-linearity as well so let's get started with transient thermal analysis. We first go to engineering data. Now the default material is structural steel and I leave it to as it is. Since there is only one wall, so I will not add any other material. We go to geometry, right click. New design modular geometry. Units, millimeter. XY look at I'll go to sketching and I'll choose rectangle. It's a plain rectangular wall I'll give it dimensions Say H1 is 60 and V2 is 150 Next I'll go to extrude Apply say the depth is 30 mm generate so this is the plain wall that we are going to analyze. Next, I'll go to model and double click on it. I'll go to mesh. I'll choose sizing as fine. Update. Next, I'll go to analysis settings and insert convection for this entire body so i'll choose the entire body apply for structural steel let me assume the film coefficient as 35 watt per mm square degree celsius you can see here the ambient temperature is 22 degrees celsius now i will change the initial temperature to say minus 20 degrees celsius so this will give a variation of temperature in the system and also I will go to analysis settings and here number of steps I will change it to say 10. Next I will go to solution and insert thermal temperature. I want to see the temperature over the entire body. I will go to solution and solve. Let's go to temperature. You can see here the minimum temperature is minus 22 that we have given and the maximum value is 15.915 within 10 seconds. If we would have given more time, it could have covered more temperature. So here you can see so many number of iterations are formed and it is clearly shown that over a period of time, these temperatures have been attained. You can see a graph here, this is the temperature over here and this is how your time is going to vary. So your temperature and time variation is shown here. Now we want to see some more results of total heat flux and also of directional heat flux. Now directional heat flux is showing x direction which is this way. So we can leave it to this way or if you want you can also see the directional heat flux of z direction this convection value which i have applied is for the entire body if you want you can select few faces only and not the entire body so this analysis settings i have chosen for number of steps being 10 so you can see here it starts at one second it is shown here end step time so 
it starts at one second and it is going to end at 10 seconds. So we will go for solution and solve. This solution is obtained very fast, hence I went only for one solution at a time and then I chose the rest of it. If you choose all three of it, then it takes a really long time to solve. So next I'll see the total heat flux over the body. So you can see here, the value is also given. And if you observe, the value of heat flux changes with respect to time. If you recollect the analysis of steady state heat transfer, in that case, the value of heat flux was not changing with respect to time. It was a particular fixed value. But here it is going to vary. You can see here the variation has been shown in this graph. Also, we can see here the directional heat flux. This is for the x direction. So you can see here this is the directional heat flux. Now, the red and the green color are for the minimum and maximum value. If you only want to see the maximum value, so this is how it is going to vary. You just need to uncheck the minimum one. Or if you want to see the minimum heat flux, just uncheck the maximum value. And you can see the other one. So I would prefer seeing the maximum value and that's how it looks like over a period of time. You can see here from 0 to 10 seconds. This is how my heat flux has changed along the x-axis. If you want, you can also see the directional heat flux along the z-axis. So just solve again. It should not take more than 3 to 4 seconds. So this is my directional heat flux along the z-axis. Again, you can see here the values are plotted and also noted down over here in a tabular form. So this is my maximum value of heat flux from 0 to 10 seconds. So there are various other options also possible. We will see with few more numericals in the upcoming sessions. I hope you have understood how to analyze a transient thermal problem. If you have any doubts, please write to me in the comment section. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe to the channel. Hit the bell icon for latest video updates. See you in the next session. Thank you.